Hi, welcome to this Corporate Miles video. In this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to the quartiles practice questions. If you need any extra help on quartiles, if you go to corporatemiles.com and go to the videos and worksheets section or corporatemiles.com forward slash content, and you scroll down to video number 57B, there's a dedicated video tutorial there on quartiles. But if you want some help with the practice questions or how to do a particular question, this video, we're going to go through the video solutions to the practice questions. So let's get started. Okay, so in terms of our first question, it says seven students did a test and here are their results. So we've got their results, and if we have a look at them, they are in order, that's fantastic. And the first question says find the median. So remember the median is the middle value, so the middle value will be here, 66%. So that's gonna be the median, 66%. Okay, and part B. Part B says find the lower quartile score. And in terms of finding the lower quartile here, that's a quarter of the way through the data. So there's the median there. So we're gonna look at the bottom 50% of the data here, and we're gonna find the middle of that. And the middle of that will be this value here. So that will be the lower quartile. So this is the approach that I would use for GCSE questions. I would use a slightly different approach for A-level questions, but, but this is how I'd approach these GCSE questions questions. Okay, so part B says find the lower quartile score, that's 61%. So 61%. Okay, and part C. Part C says find the upper quartile score. So here's the upper 50% of the data here. So we're going to find the upper quartile, which would be in the middle of that. So that's 75% of the way through the data. So that's the upper quartile, which is 68%. So 68%. And then part D says find the interquartile range. That's the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile. So we're going to take the upper quartile and subtract the lower quartile. And 68 take away 61 is equal to 7. So the interquartile range is 7%. And that's it. So we've answered it. We'll find the median, the lower quartile, the upper quartile, and the interquartile range. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number two. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number two. So question number two says, the speed of 11 cars passing a speed camera are recorded below. So we've got their speeds. I should have really have said in miles per hour. So these, the, so these are the speeds in miles per hour. So we've got from 90 miles per hour up to 36 miles per hour. So these speeds are in order from the slowest to the fastest. So we want to find the medium, which is the middle value. So we cross off the smallest, the biggest, the next smallest, the next 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 biggest. And as you can see here, that would be the median there, 29 miles per hour. So 29 miles per hour. Okay, so that's part A done. And I'm just going to rub that out because obviously here we may need these numbers for the next part of the question where we've been asked to find the lower quartile. So part B, part B says find the lower quartile. So we're going to look at this bottom half of the data here. So we're going to ignore the median and we're going to look at these values here and we're going to find the middle of those values. So the middle of these values will be 26. So the lower quartile is 26 miles per hour. Okay, part C. Part C says find the upper quartile. So we're going to look at the top half of the data. So this part here. And we're going to ignore the median. So we're just going to look at this top half of the data here. We're going to find the middle of that. So that's going to be here, 30. So the upper quartile is 30 miles per hour. That's the upper quartile, 75% of the way through the data. So that's 30 miles per hour. And part D says find the interquartile range. So that's the upper quartile, subtract the lower quartile. And that's equal to 4. So that's 4 miles per hour. And that's it, we've answered that question. And if you got those, well done. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number three. So question number three, we've got the height of seven footballers and we've been asked to find the upper quartile of the heights. Now, as you can see here, the heights aren't in order, so let's order them from the shortest to the tallest. Okay, so we've ordered the heights from the shortest to the tallest. And we've been asked to find the upper quartile of the heights. So as you can see, the 180 centimeters would be the median, that's the median. So we're gonna look at this top half of the data here and we're gonna find the middle of those, so that will be there, 188 centimeters. 188 centimeters, that's the upper quartile. Okay, next, question number four. So question number four says 11 people solve a puzzle and the time taken in minutes by each person to solve the puzzle are shown below. So we've got all the times in minutes and they're all jumbled up so we're gonna to need to put them in order. So let's start to begin with. So I've ordered all the times from the quickest to the slowest and part A says work out the lower quartile. So the median will be here, that's the median there. So to find the lower quartile, we'll look at the bottom half of the data here and we'll find the middle of those, which is here, seven. So the lower quartile is seven minutes. In terms of part B, the upper quartile, we'll look at the top half of the data. Again, ignore the median. So the top half of the data here, we're going to go for nine. So that's nine minutes. And that's it. We've answered part A, the lower quartile is seven minutes. And the upper quartile, part B, is nine minutes. And that's it.
Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number five. And we've been told here the ages of 15 people, and fantastic, they are in order, that's great. And we've been asked to work out the interquartile range of the ages. So let's find the median to begin with. So the median will be the middle value, so that's going to be the eight value. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there, that's the median. And I found that by, you could have crossed them off, the smallest and the largest and so on. Or in terms of finding the median, you can add one, which is 16, and divide by two is equal to eight, so that's the eight value. So I found the eight value, so that's the median. So that's the median. We want to find the interquartile range, so we're going to need to find the lower quartile and the upper quartile. So let's look at the bottom 50% of the data. So here we have got our bottom 50%, and the median of that will be the middle of that will be here. So that means the lower quartile is equal to 30 years old. The upper quartile, let's look at the top 50% of the data. That's the upper quartile there, so that's the upper quartile. So we've got the lower quartile and the upper quartile, so we'll just take those away. 48 subtract 30 is equal to 18. So the interquartile range of the ages, the difference between that middle 50% of the data, is equal to 18 and that's it okay let's look at our next question question number six so question number six it says 11 students guess the number of jelly beans in a jar and here are their guesses so we've got all their guesses here well actually probably a good strategy here would be to add up all these guesses and divide by 11 find the mean of them and you actually find that's going to be pretty close to the actual number of jelly beans in the jar it's called the wisdom of the crowd but in terms of their guesses we've got these guesses and we've been asked to work out the range of the guesses so that's going to be the biggest or the highest number of jelly beans subtract the lowest number of jelly beans so we're going to do 2600 and they are in order 2600 600, take away 400 is equal to 2200 so that's fantastic and part b part b says find the interquartile range so let's find the median so 11 plus 1 is 12 divided by 2 is 6 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 that's the median so let's find the median so that's the median now let's look at the bottom 50 percent of the data so the lower quartile will be this value that's the lower quartile and the upper quartile will be this value that's the upper quartile and to find the interquartile range we'll just take them away so we're going to do 1350 take away 850 and that's equal to 500 so that means the interquartile range is 500. So let's write that down. And that's it, we found the range and the interquartile range. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number seven. And we've got the ages of 11 trees in years are shown below. And the ages are arranged from the youngest to the oldest. So the oldest tree is 90 years old. We're told the range of the ages is 73. Okay, so the difference between the oldest and the youngest is 73 years. So that means that 90 take away this number is equal to 73. So that means if I do 90, take away the 73, we'll find the age of the youngest tree. So if we do 90, the oldest one, take away the range, that's going to give us the age of this youngest tree. And that's equal to 17. So that means that the youngest tree must have been 17 years old. In terms of this tree here, well, let's find it. Let's have a look at this. We've got the median, which is here. This would be the lower quartile. This value would be the upper quartile. So the upper quartile take away the lower quartile will be equal to the interquartile range, which is 30. So the upper quartile take away 30 is equal to 30. So if we take the lower quartile, add on 30, we can then find the upper quartile. So 30 plus 30 is equal to 60. So that means that this value must be 60. So this tree is 60 years old. So we've found the two missing ages and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So question number eight. So question number eight. Now, actually, if you're reading question number eight on your practice questions, you may notice it's slightly different than this version here. I've actually written down that these writings are in order from the lowest rating to the highest rating. So it says seven judges scored a joke out of 10, and some of the scores are shown below. And the scores are ordered from the lowest rating to the highest rating. And that will have been added on, and you'll see that in your practice questions. I've just noticed that. And we've got these scores. They're going from 1.1 1 .1 out of 10. That's not very good, up to 6.5. So... Okay, and the median is half of the interquartile range, and the interquartile range is two thirds of the range. Find the missing numbers. Okay, so we've been told some information here. Now, in terms of the median score, that's this one, because they are in order. This is the median, and we don't know it. And the interquartile range, well, if that's the median there, that's the upper quartile, and that's the lower quartile. So that means the difference between this number and this number is the interquartile range. So we don't know either of those, the median or the interquartile range. We're told the interquartile range is two thirds of the range. Oh, fantastic, we can work out the range. So let's work out the range. The range would be the highest rating, subtract the lowest rating, and 6.5, take away 1.1 is equal to 5.4 so the range is equal to 5.4 it then says the interquartile range is two-thirds of the range so if we work out two-thirds of this we can find the interquartile range so let's work out two-thirds of 5.4 and to get two-thirds of a number you divide by the bottom and times by the top so to find two-thirds of it we'll divide it by three and times it by two so we'll take our 5.4 and we'll divide that by three and this is a calculator question so we can do that on the calculator 
and that's equal to 1.8, so that's one third. We want two thirds, so we're now going to times by two, so 1.8 multiplied by two is equal to 3.6. So that means the interquartile range, the interquartile range is equal to 3.6. Now, in terms of the interquartile range, we work that out by doing the upper quartile take away the lower quartile. So 5.1 take away this number is equal to 3.6. Or if we do 5.1 take away the interquartile range of 3.6, we can find the lower quartile. So let's do that. 5.1 take away 3.6 is equal to 1.5. So that means that the lower quartile is 1.5. And let's just check that. 5.1 take away 1.5 is 3.6, the interquartile range. Fantastic. Okay, so we find that value. We're then told that the median is half of the interquartile range. Well, the interquartile range is 3.6. So if we do 3.6 divided by 2, that's equal to 1.8. So that means the median is 1.8. So that's it. We've got the values. We find the two missing values. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 9. So question number 9 says the students in class 10A and 10B sit in the exam. And here are the scores for the 15 students in class 10A. And we've got their scores and they're in order. Fantastic. And we've been asked to complete this table. So they're in order. So the lowest score will be 12. The highest score will be 48. The median, well, there's 15. If we add one, that's 16 and a half. That's, it. that's equal to 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The 8 value is this one. So that's the median, 35. You could have crossed off the smallest and biggest and find the median that way. So we find the median. Now let's find the lower quartile. So let's consider these values, the bottom 50% of the data. And as you can see here, this one here would be the lower quartile. So that's the lower quartile. And the upper quartile would be this one here. The upper quartile would be equal to 39. So the lower quartile is 27. And the upper quartile is 39. Okay, so we've completed that table. And then if we scroll down, we've been given some information for the students in class 10B. And then we've been asked to compare the distribution of scores achieved by class 10A with the distribution of scores achieved by class 10B. So normally whenever I compare the distributions, I compare the medians to see who done better, so which class done better. And then I tend to compare the interquartile ranges to see who's more consistent. So let's do that. Let's find out the median. So we've got the median for class 10B is equal to 37, and the median for class 10 and A is equal to 35. So the median for class B is slightly higher than the median for class A. So let's talk about that to begin with. Okay, so I've just written down class 10B performed better than class 10A as their median was higher. 37 is greater than 35. Now let's work out the interquartile ranges and see which class was more consistent. So in terms of this class 10A, the upper quartile is 39. Subtract the lower quartile is 27, and that's equal to 12. So the interquartile range, the interquartile range for class 10A is equal to 12. Now let's find the interquartile range for class 10B to work out how spread out their results are. So the upper quartile is 48. Subtract the lower quartile, which is 30, is equal to 18. Okay, so we've worked out the interquartile ranges. So the interquartile range for class A is 12, whereas the interquartile range for 10B is equal equal to 18. So in 10B, the results are more spread out. So some students are performing really well, but some are performing less well. They're, they're quite spread out. So let's write that down. And that's it. I've just written down the results for class B were more spread out as their interquartile range was greater. So 18 is greater than 12. So their results were more spread out or less consistent. And that's it. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at the video solutions to the quartiles practice questions. If you need any extra help on quartiles, if you go to video number 57B, there's a dedicated video tutorial there on quartiles. But in this video, we'll focus on the video solutions to the practice questions. I really hope you found it useful. If you have found it useful, please like the video and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks so much. Cheers. Bye.